So yesterday we got through Mumbo's Mountain in 11 minutes and change and uh, Treasure Trove Cove in 20 minutes and change. So I feel like I'm making pretty good time, but we've got to keep this up. We have Clanker's Cavern today, which is a slog of a level due to this swimming. Um, as you can see, cumulatively, we're at 41 minutes, 32 seconds on this game, but we're making good on the completion rates for the levels. So we just got to keep that up. All right, we're going to jump right in. Grunty's Lair, day two, got six honeycomb health hits at the moment, three lives. I'm pretty sure I had a lot more, but I guess they knock them off every time you get a game over or quit. Which quitting actually is a game over in this universe. And, oh yeah, I forgot to pick up this shock pad. So let's get up here and let us get Clanker's Cavern opened up. If you want to place all your pieces into the picture, just press the right trigger. Done and done. Something I wish they could have just told you from the beginning, you know? Like, why do the puzzle placement mechanics have to be doled out so slowly? Why wouldn't you just want to slam them all in at the right moment? It's like how yesterday they were like, if you want to take puzzle pieces out, I'm not taking any of them out. I'm going straight forward in this game. Ugh. So, the path to Clanker's Cavern uh, requires a couple hop, skips, and jumps. Uh, that's what's really unique about Grunty's Lair. It is very much a level in and of itself. There's puzzles throughout, there's jiggies and other secrets throughout. It keeps you very busy, and uh, it's just part of this game's charm. It's why I very much enjoy it. So, we are gonna hustle over to here, and we're gonna get into Clanker's Cavern. So Clanker's Cavern is this kind of toxic, uh, waste-like sewer that is home to a very large uh, trash compactor shaped like a shark, and his name is Clanker. We're going to meet him in a moment, but right now we got to survey this initial area. There's a couple things we can pick up. Most importantly, music notes, baby. And here we're going to see a bunch of these big old slug boys. They're always going to try to get the jump on you, but you just got to remember to attack first. And here, we've got the Golden Feather. Look at you, I'm an invulnerability feather. Bottles will tell you more. So, yes, these Gold Feathers, which come in limited supply, grant you momentary uh, bursts of invulnerability. Oh, see, he got the jump on me. He got the jump on me there. I was not quick enough. This is what I was saying, how uh, yesterday I got a little bit of ring rust to have not played this game in a few years, so trying to match my personal time actually going to be a bit of a challenge because this would be boring if there was no challenge, right? Right? And up here, collecting the first Jinjo of the level, the little yellow boy, and getting my revenge for good measure. Alright, it's time to get into the actual meat of this level. Go to Clanker's Cavern itself. Whoop, jumped a little in a little too early. But we're gonna follow the musical notes and see where they lead us. So we're gonna come up here. Oh, you can already see him. You can see his mighty jaws. Brom Clanker, which is garbage grinder. Clanker, not like dirty water. Want fresh air. Yes, like most things in this game, he is sentient which adds to the tragic nature of his suffering. Uh, so, what we gotta do here, we have got to let him rise up above the water to get some air, and we've gotta get down here before we ourselves run out of air. This is a perilous piece of swimming gameplay right here, to be 100% honest with you. I am I'm playing with fire here, y'all. Give me that. Oh, no. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm gonna die. So that sucks. No! So close! Ah! Oh. Brutal! Brutal! But that's the price you pay for getting too cocky. But we're just gonna keep at it. Alright, we gotta hustle now. Gotta make up for time. I could have done it a lot more cleanly. You know, I wonder. 
Was that just a mistake of me being too cocky, or is Josh's criticisms of the water swimming mechanics in this game really getting to me? I don't know. All I know is that when we did the podcast episode of Banjo Kazooie earlier this year, Blanker. When we did the podcast episode on Clanker's Cavern earlier this year, Josh said that, in his opinion, the water mechanics for this game were very not friendly. And he had a hard time swimming, and he specifically complained about this part. And I righteously defended it. I was like, no, nah, there's nothing wrong with Clanker's Cavern. If you just know what you're doing, this is easy peasy. And as you can see, I just choked myself right there, eating my own words. But that's okay. It's all right gonna get back on the horse and just get back at it so the camera is obviously not helping there is our source of oxygen this friendly little fish come on let's get this key going all right and now clanker can rise to the surface and get him that oxygen that he so desperately wants. And because it's a cutscene, I don't need to breathe anymore, so I get a little bit of downtime from needing any O2. And that's the first jiggy given to us in this level. But we've got some stuff to do down here. Got some musical notes we gotta collect. And uh, got a Jinjo friend. Ah. All right, Josh. I'll give it to you. Swimming's not as precise as it could be in certain areas and certain moments, but... It's... Ah, thank you. Look at that. I wish that's how air actually worked in real life. So we got a little Jinjo buddy to free, and we got two musical notes down here. And I'm already kind of predicting that Clanker's Cavern may cost me some time off of my best run. Uh, I should get my stuff together like I'm gloop. Grab my bubbles if you're low on air. Uh oh. Uh oh. No. Don't do it again. There we go. Alright. I just need one more bubble. Maybe two more bubbles. Alright. So let's get out of this pit. Alright. Let's get up top here. Let's, uh, I don't know, I'm feeling a little bit braver though. Who knows, maybe I can get in here. There's a Jiggy at the end of this. Or is there a Jinjo? I forget. Folks, I think I overdid it again. Oh no. Gotta swim as fast as possible. Oh man, I'm just setting myself up. You know, this is, don't come into the streams with big ego, guys. It's a lesson I think I'm gonna be learning as we do more of these gameplay sessions. Oh! Oh! Oh, I made it! I made it! Never mind, my ego was completely justified. I am the man! Alright. So we got that out of the way. Now let's hop up on here. Look, you see he's part metal, part machine. He's mach more machine now than shark, twisted, and evil. Give me that. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Ba -da -ba nice, nice. Clanker's teeth hurt now. Eat too much garbage, help Clanker. Got Iron Giant speech vibes coming off of him. Hogarth Clanker. Alright, that's right. We gotta hit a switch to get in there, and we'll find that baby in a moment. Gotta collect me some musical notes in the meantime. Got a mumbo token. One step closer to getting a transformation when we hit up Bubble Goop Swamp. All right, so there's uh, perimeter obstacles and collectibles around here as well. Uh, as you can see, there is a one-up trophy on top of a spring pad, which I believe, yeah, I can't just jump out of the water for that. I've got to get up here, wait for the fin to come up, and let him raise me up, kill this, kill this sluggish boy, and uh, here we go. Ah, 
A pipe with some musical notes. Gonna go scoot these up quick. And look, we are almost halfway to having all the musical notes within this level. Don't know why I started to swim there. Alright, we're close to Clanker's teeth, though, so let's kick those out. Come on. Come on, buddy. Get up here. Alright, so we knocked out one of his bad, rusty teeth. And now we're gonna hop over here, and we're gonna do it again. Amateur dentistry. At its finest. Think this I gone. Clanker swallowed reward. Teeth all better now. Thank you, Bear. See, he's really nice about Banjo. He doesn't immediately start targeting his weight. Alright, so we're gonna burst up here. Boom! There we go. Got some goodies we can collect. Some musical notes and a jiggy. Which I think is swell. Give me that jiggy. There we go. So I want to do some more, uh, you know, chores in this outer area here before we go into Clanker proper. Uh, I like just working from uh, the outside in on this level. It's how I personally like managing my time. There's a couple tunnels I can see that are uh, underneath the water. We're going to be exploring those in a moment. But for right now, we're going to walk up here, and what do we got up top? We got musical note, feather, egg, feather, egg. Oh, they broke the pattern already. Where's the musical note? Oh, there we go. Musical note, and let's finish it off with a one-up trophy for good measure. All right, so we're going to come down. Let's see what's in this dangerous, noxious pipe. And let's see here. Ah, there's another one of our Jinjo buddies. So, three down, two to go. Alright, I believe across the way is a pipe there with musical notes in it. Definitely going to head over there. And then, uh, ooh, that ominous green tunnel down there. We're definitely going to have to check out what's in that. Let me just take a quick detour through here. And, yep, my hunch... My memory served me right. We have musical notes, nice all in a row. Gonna scoop these up. I wonder how much they weigh. Just, you know, solid gold notes that look to be about like a foot or two in height. Just throwing them all into the backpack. It's like Harry Potter. Ooh, Harry Potter. Uh, but it's like, you know, a bag with infinite storage space from a, a children's magical franchise that is in no way awkward to talk about in the year 2020. But we're going to dive back underwater, and we are going to see where this neon green glowing tube leads us. And as we come up to the surface, we have... Musical notes, and ah, mutant crabs! Snippet mutants are we, Jigsaw's Fight us if you must! I'll fight them. Oh, guess uh, eggs aren't going to work there. Ah. The, uh, there's a little gap here, like a little lip in the floor, and it's preventing me from hitting exactly where I want. One down, two down, let's get some honeycombs back up. This would go a little faster if I had gone inside Clanker and picked up the, uh, oh, rude. And I picked up the invulnerability feathers, but it's not a terrible challenge. Snippets, mutants, are we your surprise? Alright, so let's scoop up the musical notes that we have claimed in victory. And then let's also, just for the heck of it, let's get that jiggy. I feel like we earned it, we killed, we murdered a bunch of defenseless, uh, physically disadvantaged creatures. Why not just take the jiggy they gave us? Four. All right, making good progress. Now we gotta go into Clanker himself. We're gonna get the Tooth Jiggy. We're gonna get the Jiggy that you get for learning the invulnerability feathers. We're gonna do a, an obnoxious ring jumping swimming puzzle. And there'll be some switches inside. A lot of goodies in Clanker. It's a level within a level. 
and I think for the time that was pretty unique and creative in the gaming sphere. Um, oh, you know what? Goodness me, I gotta check out this pipe first. I think it's the only one that I had not attended to. So, let's see what's in here. Ah, Mumbo Token. Bringing us up to 11, which is more than enough for the Transformation and Bubble Goop Swap, which only costs 10. They go up in increments, 5, 10, 15, 20. You know, you get it. It's like nickels. And Clanker, open up. No, hold still. All right, so now we are inside Clanker's maw, his big steel jaw there. And, oh no, we got some more mutant snippets, or regular snippets. They weren't uh, affected by that horrible green toxicity. Ah, oh, they're just making mincemeat of me here. There we go, nuked him. So, let's pick all these jiggies up. Uh, excuse my language, all these musical notes up. Got a mumble token on that tooth. I'm gonna let that one go for right now. I'm not as concerned. I need to get... Oh, uh, hear the ominous music. You see the weird, creepy tentacles. Or are they barnacles? I don't know. But now we are in uh, quite a notorious part of Clanker's Cavern. This is a full-blown swimming and jumping challenge. And we are just gonna get right into it. Let's get through all these hoops, baby! So they turn green as we get to them, and you gotta swim for some, you gotta jump for some, and you gotta do it all, and I believe, what was that, 50 seconds? Was that a full 60? I don't think it was a full 60, I think maybe it was 45 or something. Oof! It's alright, it's all good. I didn't need the full time anyway. What we got left? Oh, pfft. Barely a challenge. All right, we got this, we got this. Small ring, dark depths. And now the water level rises, letting us access even more sections of Kalanker's Cavern. But before we get that jiggy, there are some musical notes in a tunnel down here and maybe a Jinjo. I don't entirely recall. Yeah, this is like a uh, even more disgusting version of Jabu Jabu's Belly from Ocarina of Time, if you can believe such a thing exists. Alright, we're up to 80 musical notes, uh, and that'll be the fifth out of ten jiggies that we're gonna go collect over there. Uh, where is the other... here we go. These are like his... the entryways and exit ways out of his gills. We got another one down there? Oh, I think that's where the Jinjo is. Let's see... yes! Oh! Gotta do some strategic maneuvering, get around that little in intestinal tentacle, whatever you want to call it. And let's get up here. Alright, I think we've cleaned out a lot of these arteries. And uh, let's get up here, let's get this jiggy. Alright, let's see. Uh, for some reason, my OBS is not showing the uh, Twitch chat window and everything. I probably launched it inappropriately. So I would be really grateful to know that uh, somebody's watching. But, you know, if they're not, it's totally okay. But if you are, don't think I'm ignoring you. Uh, I will get with you in a second. Let's just get over to this little raised area. Might be enough time for me to... Hop on my phone. Can I play Banjo Kazooie one handed? Yeah, I can. I'm just that good. Alright, let's see here. While I'm just, you know, knocking time off of this record run, let's see. Chat only. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna learn the invulnerability feathers right now. This move uses Biko's wings as a shield against the bad guys. Cool, does it make me invulnerable? Sure does! Hold the right or left trigger and push the right stick right. Keep the right or left trigger held and use the left stick to move around. Use it wisely though. 
as his move requires gold feathers, and you can only carry ten of them. Here, take these five valuable gold feathers with you. Hmm, your energy is a little low. I'll fill it up for you. Such a helpful little guy. You learned all my moves to this level. All right, let's uh, leave me alone then. Oh, there we go. So, fun fact about, you know, the invulnerability theme and actually some of the theme music in Banjo-Kazooie in general. Uh, let's just get back through this obnoxious little obstacle here. There we go. So, uh, I went to a music panel at MAGFest uh, 2019. MAGFest is the music and gaming festival held in Maryland every year. It's probably one of the most fun gaming experiences I'm lucky enough to attend annually. And I went to a panel on the music of Banjo-Kazooie, hosted by a very knowledgeable uh, music program graduate. And they discussed how and shared like footage and excerpts from an interview they did with Grant Kirkhope. And uh, the interview, endlessly fascinating, specifically in how they discussed that uh, not only was the music in this game inspired by the Tim Burton film Beetlejuice, if you listen to like the Beetlejuice opening song over the credits and like the Banjo-Kazooie theme, you can find some interesting similarities, but uh, also there was a really cool connection to just that classic schoolyard uh, kind of tease that kids will throw at each other, you know, the na 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 that is literally like part of the Banjo-Kazooie theme, and it's just one of those simple little musical motifs that I find really cool. Grant Kirkhope just was like, uh, yeah, like, this is fun and goofy, so let's just make it part of the characters and their actual world and expression. So there's the, uh, Gruntilda switch for Clanker's Cavern. And we're gonna just run through here. No, I believe. I believe! Ah, whoops. I don't even need him for this one. This is just pure skill, baby. Alright, where does this door take me? Because that one back there, pretty sure that just leaves me. Ah, okay. So, we've got one, or two, we got the Jinjo Jiggy, and we've got that Jiggy behind a cage up top there, and that should cap us off, but the real conundrum, of course, is getting to them. So, I believe I've seen everything I have to do inside old Clanker here, I'm gonna exit out. So, where are we going from here? This is where I'm uh, competing not just against the clock, but against my memory. Hmm. I gotta remember where all these spots were. Let's, uh, let's go into first person mode real quick and look around. Let's see if there's any uh, sections of this big old cavern that I haven't been to yet, or that I've overlooked. I know what I overlooked. Ah, uh, yes. So we're gonna hop up here, and we're gonna climb this old pole. And is that a Jinjo I hear? You betcha it is. Got me the Jinjo Jiggy. All right, one Jiggy left and only a handful of musical notes. I. I'm pretty confident this is going to net me them. 99, 100. And look at that. We got one of the extra honeycomb pieces for this level. Obviously, problematically, we uh, don't have that upper gate unlocked. Oh, I think I know what I forgot to do. You just probably have to hit this gate with an egg. There's some just... Curiously not appropriately cued puzzles in this game, but you know, I was one of those kids who bought strategy guides So of course I just remember all this stuff Is this all I had to do? There we go And that's it 10 for 10 everybody Guh-huh, guh-huh, all right 
So we could just peace out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it, but I think it might honestly just be faster for me to drown. So either I'm gonna get out on time or I'm gonna run out of air. Let's see. We shall see what happens. I think I'm just gonna make it out. So all right, we have completed Clanker's Cavern 100%. I know I didn't get all the extra honeycomb pieces that I could have in this level, but you know, they don't go towards 100% goals. They're mostly there to just cover your butt if you want more health. I don't really think I need them, so I'm just gonna ignore them and whatever. This is my gameplay, deal with it. So we've got out of this in one piece, even though I totally died and totally almost died another time. But, that's not gonna stop us. You're dead. You're dead. Let's pick up some gold feather refills. And let's get back to the lair. So as soon as we're out here, I just want to check my complete time. Twenty-three forty-six. Alright, I did that to myself. I could have completed that much faster, and I know it, but... Sucks to suck, I guess. Gotta do better. Alright, so now we're gonna go about the process of uh, opening up and accessing Bubble Gloop Swamp. And uh, what we gotta do is we gotta follow this series of puzzles that the lair is uh, making available to us. You're dead. <gasps> it's Brentilda! Time to get some grunty dirt. Gruntilda wears a reinforced girdle under that repulsive dress of hers. Ooh, spill the tea, Brentilda. She's also got this nasty pet dog whose name is Leg Chomper. Sounds like a liability. My sister sings in her own band, Grunty and the Broomstick Boys. They're awful. Sounds terrible. You're a feathered buddy that you brung. Unless, like a pile, useless like a pile of dung. Oh, man. Just when you think you have all the tea on Gruntilda, she decides she's just going to throw it back at you. Making fun of Kazooie. <laughs> Actually, I don't remember if Kazooie and Gruntilda have much time to, like, you know, face off against each other in this game. But if they, I feel like they would have great rapport. Alright. And you can hear it right there. The creaking frogs... The chirping crickets of Bubble Goop Swamp. We are right at the portrait. And we're gonna drop all those pieces in at once. Took seven to unlock this little world. And boom! Bubble Goop Swamp. Alright, let's get out of here. We've gotta make tracks because Bubble Gloop Swamp is actually behind a note door and in a whole new area of Gruntilda's Lair that we have not yet accessed. You know, I was talking to my fiance yesterday and she was saying how much she really likes the design of Gruntilda's Lair. And if you think about it, it is pretty dang cool. I mean, some things seem a little nonsensical, you know, like the presence of a giant beach within the lair. But like, you know, it's magic. She's a witch. You can just go with that. But what I think is really cool is just like how that was clearly some kind of industrial like sewer system within her lair. And now we're moving up into this kind of, uh, well, you'll see after we take our bows. We're gonna be moving up into a bit of like a main atrium here. We got a giant statue that Gruntilda has uh, erected in her own image. You know, that's a real power move. Just showing off how much you think of yourself. And we're gonna jump down here because this is the pathway to Gruntilda's lair. Now I think there's boots back here. Yep, and we can't use the boots yet. And back here, I believe there'll be a mumbo. Oh, it's Gruntilda! What do you got, girl? My fat old sister's favorite sport is belly barging. Ugh, sounds gross. Although she's dim, she attended Fat Hag High. So wait, are you saying that was a good school? Although she's dim, she attended Fat Hag High. Does that have like a high uh, ranking? You would not believe that Gruntilda's party trick is eating a bucket of beans. Oh, gross, you know what they say, beans, beans, good for your heart, am I right? All right, so let's cross this bridge. Don't go into the water of Bubble Goop Swamp. There's piranhas in there. They'll chop your feet up. And we've got a honey boy back there, but we're going right into Bubble Goop Swamp. 
All right, there's, uh, I believe, one new move in here. Tell us, Bottles. Keep your eyes open for your next move. Oh, it's almost like it's right behind us. These are the wading boots. Children, Chicken Legs wears them so you can safely wade through dangerous areas like the swamp for a limited time. Okay, Chicken, or Kazooie, let's go grab a pair. All right, GTFO, Bottles, we got work to do. We got a swamp to tear up. Oh, look, this little gator boy. Looks like he's hungry for some eggs. Gummy Croctus liked that. So we'll be feeding these peeps throughout the level. One at a time, we'll get to them. Mm, excuse me, what's up here? Just some feathers? All right, fair enough. All right, I don't need those just yet, but it's good to know that they're there. What I do need is to save that Jinjo! What's up, buddy? Starting with the yellow Jinjo. Very cool. And we've got a frog up here who's just asking for it, you know? Boom! Right right there. He he came at me first, okay? I was totally in self-defense. Up top, eggs. Uh, not really worried about this. I want to keep getting through the level here. Ah! Alright. So, what's this? I forget. Oh, I believe this is a race to a jiggy. Yes, it is. All right, ready, set, go. 45 seconds to get up there and to cross this perilous... Oh, fuck. <sighs> this camera. Oh, come on. Man, you know, you're trying to get out of one danger and you hop right into another. Well, I don't think I'm winning that Jiggy race right now, but I am going to get my first Jiggy right here for massacring this f these frogs. And they could have tried talking to me first. Maybe I could have just, like, you know, graciously gotten off their land. Oh, I'll be young and pretty... To the old before you get Gruntilda's gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, bitch. Let's do this again. Probably narrow the camera in a little bit. And uh, let's try this race one more time. Here we go. No slip ups, no slip ups, no slip ups. Actually, I don't even need to be talent trotting. This ain't that far of a distance to cross. And look at this. Look at this. Easy peasy. I'm a fool for having struggled the first time. There we go. Second time's the charm. Two down. And we're going to get ourselves a green Jinjo just for the heck of it. Hey, buddy. Come here. So I want to make sure I'm tackling certain sections of the swamp uh, because this is a big sprawling level. It's easy to kind of get distracted and lost and there are some areas that are kind of so self-contained that if you like, you know, get yourself sucked out into them, you're kind of stuck out there for a while. So let's kill these frogs just to remove the threat. And we're gonna use the waiting boots for the first time. So let's get across here. And uh, are gonna go, wanna go for these musical notes right away because I do not believe there are waiting boots on the other side of this. So, yep, that timed out perfectly. So let's uh, let's bust open an egg here. Let's get some proteins. Some... Boom! And then we got a boom! And then we're gonna destroy this unborn egg. And then we're gonna smash it. We're gonna bash it. I said we're gonna beat Buster it. Yeah, baby! Ba -ba. All right, so these are one of those tucked away corners of the swamp that I was talking about when I said I wanted to get to them. And screw it, I'm just gonna, I'll take, I'll take getting chomped to take it across the water faster. All right, so. Uh, and a fun fact about this level, we're not actually going to quote-unquote finish it in one go because we technically can not. Uh, we will be coming back 
to this level later in the game because in order to complete it, we actually have to unlock something in Freeze Easy Peak. But we'll get around to that. Or no, I'm sorry. The unlockable isn't even in Freeze Easy Peak, it's in Gobi's Valley. So this is where they kind of, you know, like, get you to explore some levels more and, you know, with the notion that you're going to come back and do a little better next time. Oh, and there we've got the Grunty Switch for Bubble Loop Swamp. Let me just slam that down right there. Boom! Destroyed that gaudy statue. Yeah, that's what you get for being all egotistical. I've never been egotistical. Never once. Oh, we got another one. I really like this uh, section of the level. I like just the sense of progression and just the satisfaction of busting these huts as you get higher and higher. Boom! And we get a jiggy out of it. I believe that's four. Yeah, that's four. Count them. All right. So. All right. So. I hear some boots. There we go. Can't get under there. Hmm, I wonder how we will fit. But we're going to scoop up these for now. And next, I think we're going to go visit some turtles. Turtles big and small, that is. Or maybe we should go check out Mumbo. I think that's a little bit more of a technically complex part of this world. Yeah, I think we're going to head this way. Uh, just to take care of that. No, you know what? We're not going to do that. I'm lying to you. I want to save that section for last. Because of how complex it is. And I think it's, you know, also because I'm pretty positive we need to leave this level as Mumbo's transformation. Oh, my feet are so numb and cold. Let me bash them in for you. He's in so much pain. Ah, that's a bit better, <laughs> he says as he screams every time. And let's break your fourth foot. Blech! Tank tops warm at last. Perhaps you'd like this. Yes, yes I would. You're a mind reader, tank top. Thank you, buddy. Gonna pick us up an orange Jinjo. Three out of five are alive. And we don't need the waiting boots anymore, so you just hit X to put them away. So let's... Oh, wow. You touch like a corner of the water, and boom, just bites you right away. I tell you. All right, let's go inside. It's the Tip Top Music School, and appropriately, there are musical notes in here, so I'm gonna grab these really quick. Let's talk to the choir director here. Ham, ham, right, please. The famous Tip Top Choir will now perform my latest work. Tip Top, of course, named after Tip Top the Turtle from Diddy Kong Racing. Purple, yellow, light blue. It's short, isn't it, Shellboy? We'll see. Copy what you just heard for lesson one. All right, so yep, this is just a basic match game. We have to assault these young music students and force them to repeat the pattern that they've played. All right, now Tip Top, show me what's next. Hmm, not too bad. Very Squidward-like, bitter music teacher, you know? Blue, light blue, blue, yellow, blue. All right. Blue. Light blue. Blue. Yellow. And blue. Oh, whoopsie daisy. And blue. All right, doing pretty good. Ah, splendid. You just need one more lesson. Blue. Purple. Yellow. Blue. Yellow. Light blue. Purple. Alright, let's see if I can remember that. Blue. Ah. The hit detection on this. Purple. Yellow. Come on. Blue. Oh, whoops. No, that's not right. Try again or ask me to repeat the lesson. Alright, I messed up. You just gotta tell me. All right, what are we doing here? Blue, purple, yellow, 
blue, yellow, light blue, purple. All right, got this, we got this. Blue. What? Oh. Oh, you have to just keep going from the last one you got right. Yellow. Blue. Yellow. Light. Purple. There we go. Yeah, yeah, give me that jiggy. And how dare you assault me for getting this wrong. This is supposed to be a music school, not a torture chamber. Ba ba. Ba da ba da ba. Alright, let's get out of here before this musician puts me through any more pain. Alright, now we're gonna head into the kind of last gasps of this level. Uh, I think I need to hit up a honey hive, get myself some, some noms to replenish my health. Let's go, you know what this is. Oh, excuse me there. Woo! Woo! Alright. Now we're going right for Mr. Vile's backyard. He's a mean old crocodile, and that's his hut. That's where he hosts his sadistic little game show. But we're going to be exploring the areas around this. And we're going to be checking out what we can pick up around here. Uh, and first and foremost, I'm pretty sure that involves going to see our good buddy Mumbo Jumbo, who resides within this uh, maze of toxic water. Not toxic, piranha filled water. There's so much negative water in Gruntilda's lair that, you know, sometimes you can get a little mixed up, but it's all good. 73. 74. 75. So the waiting boots are going to expire. We're going to have to pick up a new pair and just keep on trucking. So we are at 76, baby. I feel like I'm making good time on this. How could I not be? It feels like it's going so fast. Maybe since I'm having fun with you all here on A Cast of the Past, thanks again for joining us uh, in this Banjo-Kazooie playthrough. 22nd birthday of this classic game, and I am playing it because it's one of my all-time favorite games. Uh, Josh and I are trying to, you know, do some live streams to share what games are most important to us, to you, our audience, so that we can, uh, you know, up the historical gaming experience beyond just our podcast. You know, you get... The podcast will be the audio treats, and then, you know, these live streams are the visual treats. And we appreciate you for joining us in whatever capacity, whether you're watching it live on Twitch right now, or whether you're checking it out on our YouTube channel. Um, tomorrow, Friday, June, uh, July 10th, I'm going to be posting up the uh, condensed version of my Mumbles Mountain slash Treasure Trove Cove run that originally ran here a few days ago on Twitch, so that you can check that out. Twitch, you know, obviously they bring their streams down after a set time, so we like giving everybody a chance to watch these playthroughs forever. So, got everything that we need there. Ten? Yep, just like I figured it would be from memory. What's this? And we're just gonna steal a Mumbo token from behind Mumbo's chair, you know, no big. Alright, let's get our transformation game on. And we are now a little chompy crocodile. Ah, uh, Mumbo threatening to murder us and skin us alive. That funny guy. But, yep, that's the kind of wackiness that Mumbo endorses. And, uh, oh no! Tom really done did it this time. Well, alright, we're gonna go get our crocodile goat stuff, and then uh, I'm gonna go back there and finish off the level. I should not have transformed as quickly. That's sequence breaking, folks. It's uh, something that can really spell your doom. What, for me, it spells my doom in competitive trading card games and uh, things like this where you're trying to beat certain times. 586, so that'll bring us up to 88. And we got those three, so yeah, I think that makes sense. And now we got Mr. Vile himself. Her, 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 I'm Mr. Vile, greediest crack of all. Play my game to win a prize. Press A to accept or B to check it out. Oh, I'm gonna hit A. Game is simple. Eat more red yumblies than me. Press X to eat yumblies. Ready? Three, two, one, go. 
Alright, now I'm not done. So, the kind of trick here is just keep mashing B because the act of biting kind of propels you forward a little bit. It gives you a little bit of a speed advantage. And I am just schooling Mr. Vile at his own game right now. Which I think is funny. These Yumblies, for all I know, they're just this innocent, peaceful, you know, race of creatures. And we're just turning them into a carnivore's delight right now. <laughs> Alright, I got a two Yumbly lead on Mr. Vile. Keeping that lead high as I can. And we're gonna chop these boys. Scoop them all up. 21. 22. That's what I like to see. 24. 25. Can I do 30? Can I get to 30? I am pretty confident I'm gonna be at 30 in a brief moment. Boom! 30 to 24. This guy's got no hope. I just scoop that one out from in front of him. He shouldn't even have came. I'm literally eating his lunch. 32. Boom! Grr, you only win easy game. Now we play a harder game. Eat reds, avoid yellow grumblies. They not ripe. Ready, three, two, one, go. So it's a color matching game here. Every time you eat a uh, yellow grumbly instead of a red yumbly, you uh, take a little bit of a, a stamina hit. Like he, uh, you start coughing and wheezing and oh, he got ahead of me first time. Oh, there we go. I ate a gross, a gross grumbly. Didn't want to do that, but it's all right. All right, now we're tied, and now we are ahead. The one danger you got to play here is that if you are relying on spamming the bite button, sometimes you could be mid-bite, and a uh, grumbly will just pop right out in front of you when you weren't ready for it, and then boom, you've chopped him, and then now you're slowed down, you're at a disadvantage. I'm not at a disadvantage. We're keeping a one-point lead, a two-point lead, a three-point lead. I'm just going to keep dominating Mr. Vile at his own game and not even feeling sorry about it. Because this is how you get jiggies. This is how you clear bubble group swap. And 25, 22. Oh, all right. Charlie's going to try to make a 26, 22. But... Bah, lucky greenie wins. Must play last game. Only eat what is shown at top of screen. Ready, three, two, one, go. Alright, so, now it's, uh... Alright, it's gonna be switching out in a moment. You kinda wanna try to, like, find yourself a nice streak of the ones that you think are coming next all lined up in a row, because it's pretty handy to get them in right when the change happens. So we're at 9 to 7, a good lead, a handy lead. I want to keep it up. 10 to 7. All right. Boom. Let's get these grumblies eaten up. Oh, he got out of my way. A little too quick. 12 to 9. All right, come on, just switch over because I'm going to dominate right now. Boom. Oh, almost a hat trick right there. It's all good though. 15 to 12, keeping a good lead. I think we're switching over in a second, though. So I want to keep myself right here. They seem to uh, disappear a lot faster. 17, 16, uh-oh. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. 18, 17, by the skin of my teeth I won. How about that? Mr. Vile never lost before. Greedy could have prize. Bum, 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 bum. Mr. Vile now has tougher challenge of Greedy not scared. You must win next three games to win three extra lives, but each time Greedy loses, Mr. Vile chomps you for one life. Press A to accept or B to slide off like a slug. Baddest crock of all. Look everyone, Greedy is scurrying off. Yep, I'm just a big old crybaby loser. You sure showed me, but... That's just the truth about myself I have to face. I am not as bad as Mr. Vile. Where are we going now? Well, there's some cool little spots underneath all of these big uh, hut risers that we have here. And I gotta get some musical notes and a Jinjo out from underneath them. There's Violet Jinjo. Uh, I think there's also the last scraps of musical notes in here. Camera's not being my friend right now. Whoa, camera's really not being my friend right now. And that's not the last Jinjo, of course, because, as we already noted, I prematurely uh, transformed, and I should have been uh, in another section with Banjo before I got out. So, I think that's all I can and need to do as a crocodile down here. So, 
I am gonna head on back to Mumbo, get myself transformed out of this little croc body, and then we're gonna explore this little back corner of the swamp and then get out of here. We'll come back later because Mr. Vile, for right now, we don't have anything else to do, but when we unlock the trainer shoes, the super fast sneakers, uh, we are gonna be coming back here to clean up house. Maybe, uh, you know, we're scheduled to go three to five, maybe I can be quick enough through Freeze Easy Peak that I may just get to do that for you today. But we'll see, we'll see. Don't want to jinx ourselves. Every time I set up, every time I start, uh, you know, talking, talking the talk, I end up paying for it. So let's maybe not do that. Hey, change me back. Change me back. There we go. All right, let's go explore. And we're gonna hop into these booties. And we're gonna get going. So making our way backwards through the maze, back to that little platform. I'm gonna pick up this extra set of waiting boots just to kind of refresh the cycle. Because you never know if you might run out. And let's see what we got out here. I see musical notes. I see a frog who needs to be put in his place. Ooh, am I gonna make it? Yeah, at the last possible second. Oof! How dare you? How dare you? Ah, I see. Oof. All right, we got to get through here as quick as we can. Don't have a ton of health. Oh no, can I take can I afford to take three more hits? Ah, oh, just made it. Thank goodness for that. What do we got up here? A Jinjo and a Jiggy. Thank you. Thank you. Bumpa. That's number nine, yes. So as I stated, uh, we cannot get the 10th Jiggy in this level yet. We have to come back to play another version of Mr. Vile's game. But you know, while we're here, we are gonna get three more musical notes and then I'm gonna let myself get chomped. Just come on, come on, rip me up, rip and tear, boom. And one more, just do it. Just hurt me, come on, ah. Oh. It's okay, it's intentional because as you see, now we're back at the beginning of the level, and we can swiftly exit and get out here. So, what's next on the agenda? Well, we have to get through there. But luckily for us, access to Bubble Gloop Swap has given us the waiting boots. So we're going to come back here to this tunnel, where much earlier, as you remember, we saw those waiting boots. Whoop! Hey, Banjo, you're looking glum. It must be hard being so dumb. Oh, wow. He's have to go after his intelligence. The man's really insecure about that. Come on. He's just a simple country bear. You know, he likes the country bears. There's nothing wrong with that. He's a person. Let him live his life. All right. So we're going to come up here, and we're going to get free ZZ Peak open, baby. There we go. Look at that big old snowman. Snow, that's something kids aren't even going to know about in 10 years when global warming ends snow as a phenomenon in most of the country. So we're going to come up here. And oh, look at that. Boom. So as you can see, this is a pipe that we cannot get through at the moment. Banjo and Kazooie are too tall. But we'll be able to access that later with the help of our crocodile form. We'll get to that shortly. That's for when we come back. So we're gonna take these waiting boots, walk all the way back to the little island plateau thing here that the bubble boot swamp entrance is on. Gonna hop up. And all right, so just for kind of checkpoint sake, let's see where we are. Gruntilda's Lair, Mumbo, Treasure, Clanker, Bubble Gloop. Took us 22 minutes to get all those things. So we're starting to see a pretty a pretty fair average across the board. We got through Mumbo's Mountain in 11 minutes, but Clanker's, Treasure, and Bubble Gloop all took in the 20 minute range. So 20, 40, 60, about an hour and 10, hour and 20 into the game at this point. Uh, we've got four hours and change to try to finish things up here. Can I do it? Heck yeah, I can do it. Let's get going. 
If you're just joining us, we're making our way to Freezeezy Peak, the fifth level in Banjo-Kazooie. My name's Tom. I'm one of the co-hosts of A Cast to the Past, the time-traveling video game podcast where best friends get together to look at old games in a new light. Uh, Josh and I are conducting a gameplay series called My Favorite Games, where we share some of the most important games in our lives with you, our fans. And right now, boom. I am proud to say that I am playing Banjo-Kazooie, a seminal game in both my development and honestly my continued life. Uh, it's probably the game that my fiance and I have the most in common with. We just love this game. And I am trying to, oh whoops, I am trying to complete my personal best completion time of 5 hours and 27 minutes. That's 100% of the game done in 5 hours and 27 minutes. I am, think I'm doing fairly well so far, uh, you know, if I do say so myself. And, uh, you know, if you're tuning in at any point, thank you for watching us on Twitch. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, if you're not too old for it, Facebook. All right, so we're going to head up into the next level of Gruntilda's lair here, her little Egyptian-themed tomb area. I almost like there's going to be an Egyptian-themed world at some point. But that's not yet. That's a, getting a step ahead of things. Right now... Our focus needs to be on getting to Freeze Easy Peak in all of its glory. So we're up in this morbid, cavernous area. And, uh, oh, there's a little cauldron. If you remember from last time when we played, we were uh, activating cauldrons like this one. And boom, there's the first one we accessed in the lower area of Gruntilda. Gruntilda's land. That's it. You've created a shortcut. Hop in and see. Oops. Not the right command I wanted. I want to poop on this net and get rid of it. And I also just want to kind of chug through here. I want to see what's up here. Make sure I'm not missing too much. Boom. Boom. Got a note door that's 50 out of our range. All good. We're going to be clearing that very shortly. Uh, oh, look at this. We've got another cauldron under another net. Ah. Boom, boom, boom. And he's a very blue boy. <laughs> Fell into him, and as you saw, he spit us right out. Because we're not supposed to be accessing that just yet. Many tricks are at my sleeve. To save yourself, you'd better leave. Uh, I don't think so. You kidnapped our sister, who is a child. You're, you belong on a list, Gruntilda. Gruntilda, baby! The disgusting Gruntilda has rat bagels for breakfast. Does that mean the dough is made out of rats, or rat meat is like a topping on the bagels? That's kind of hard to decipher. Then she usually has dog done burgers for dinner. Yuck! Can't be healthy at all if you're just eating shit. I mean, come on. What bags then finishes with cockroaches and cream for dessert? How horrid! Hmm. Well, hey, it's not for me, but, you know. If we're just going to apply all of the classic witch stereotypes to Gruntilda, then uh, we just got to go with that one as well. All right, Freeze Easy Peak, the winter-themed level here. Tucked in Gruntilda's uh, Christmas room of her lair, I guess. Get up there, Banjo. And I just want to check out what's in this advent calendar-esque frame here real quick. Ah... There's the trainers squeaking at me. Ha! I don't think you can use these until you found out how. All right, well, way to be rude and just rub it in. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, this has got like an advent calendar structure. And uh, let's head right inside. The peak's got another new move waiting for you. If you can find it. Oh, Bottles, you don't hide that well. Knock off the pretense. All right, we're going to scoop up some of our first musical notes, and then we're going to meet Boggy. Oh, my stomach aches. I shouldn't have eaten that shiny thing. Someone help poor Boggy. Oh, this down-on-his-luck single dad, or at least I thought he was a single dad the first time I played this game. Yeah, he clearly is eating a jiggy, and we're going to go force expel out of them, but you know, first we've got to take care of some Christmas themed adventures around the level. Let's uh, open up a Christmas present, everybody. 
We're the Twinklies. Protect us from the Twinkly Munchers as we hop across to our tree. If enough of us get there, we can light the tree for you. Come on. Now, I knew there was a trick to this that I learned about in the speedrunning community. I, for the life of me, don't remember it, so I'm just gonna have to play like a noob, but it's okay. Because this is not that hard of a challenge anyway. Granted, it probably could go faster, but whatever. I'm gonna get that Christmas tree lit. And we're done. The rest of you, I don't care if you live or die. All right. Yeah, that was close, but we made it. Now switch us on. Hang on. I'm being attacked by sentient ice. Ah. Happy holidays, everybody! Yippee! Be a star and you'll find your reward! So, I've got to race over to a flight pad, which is located on the stack of Christmas presents. There you are. And we've got to get over to the tree and fly through the star. Just get into the Christmas spirit all around. Here we go. Gonna pass through once. And then we're gonna turn around. Pass through again. And, uh, you know, one more for good measure. Let's just, you know, let's just pass through it again. Oh, whoops. It's all good. Got plenty of time, plenty of feathers. So, let's get through that star, baby. I'm a motherfucking star, boy. Alright, looks like the Christmas tree is now on for good. So, let's just ground pound. Come on, Banjo, get up, suck it up. And let's climb that tree, baby. Got a mumbo token that I gotta remember to come back down and pick up. Some musical notes, some red feathers, and some termites. Don't know how... Oh, they clearly can only survive in this cold weather climate. I don't usually waste too much time on resources, but I'm gonna refill just real quick while I'm here. Don't need to run out in the middle of the level, you know, and then have egg on my face. Ha! <laughs> And you can only hold up to 50 feathers at the moment, but, you know, we'll do something later in the game where we can increase that. But I am also going to pick up all of these musical notes. I think that's that takes the cake. Ah, oh, you, you termites, I'll let you live. It's all good. <gasps> a Christmas present? I'm a present to me for someone sad. Okay. Not a difficult request. I'm glad to help someone who's sad. Nine. Alright, so the mumbo token total for this level is gonna be 15, so I gotta find six more throughout this level. Or else I'm gonna be regretting not picking them up earlier when I had a chance. <laughs> Time for some aerial action with my devastating beak bomb attack! Nice one, goggles. I like to Kazooie have the voice of uh, Marge's sisters in The Simpsons. Nice one, goggles. Alright. Thanks, bottles. Yep, only move. Very cool, very cool. Alright, so the aerial beak bomb attack, which we have just learned, is going to be put to good use in a moment. Because I've got to take care of some problems in this level. Namely, these rude snowmen who just think they can... I, they can just throw snowballs at anybody all willy-nilly and no one's going to do anything about it. Come on. You gotta aim precisely at the top of their hat. Gotta scoop them out. Boom! There we got the Gruntilda switch for this level. Oh, I overshot it. Wow, even the water is a dick to you in this game. Everybody can just be so rude on so many levels. Really uncalled for if you think about it. 
All right, we're gonna kill the rest of those snowball snowmen shortly. But I figured while I landed over in this particular area, I might as well start doing a little bit of house cleaning, getting everything together that I may have missed or overlooked. Let's get, boom, the grunty switch for this level nailed down. There we have the advent calendar opening up for a truly worthwhile reward. Oh no, too much cold water. Like I said, a lot of bad water in this game. Cold water, toxic water, piranha water, shark infested waters. Oh man, here we got Wuzza the racist walrus. What's up, you jerk? So if you try to go near him, Yikes, a nasty, fierce bear! Like, I've never done anything to this guy. He just assumes I'm an evil bear. Phew, it's safe for Waza to come out now. Well, I'm not going to be nice to him. I'm going to make assumptions about walruses. Alright, so. Uh, the beak ability, the beak bomb, has the ability to do this also. I'm going to ruin this snowman's buttons. <laughs> oh wow. This is not my day. Yeesh. Well, that was embarrassing. Time to move along and pretend like nothing unfortunate ever happened. Alright, there we go. Let's get up here. Let's get these musical notes that'll take some of the sting off of that bruised ego. And look, some honeycombs for good measure. Pow! That. So, this is honestly one of the more pleasant levels to get through, honestly. It's got very good soundtrack, uh, a nice layout, I think, that kind of helps you tackle everything in sections. Uh, everything is just designed with the maximum amount of charm in mind. And, uh, it's just, it's good. It's just good. And isn't that enough in gaming? Shouldn't that be what gaming gives us more of? Is just, you know, stuff that's good. Uh, speaking of good, I see another Christmas present down there. Somebody is gonna get something they've wanted under their tree this year. Boo, it's cold! Nice warm backpack for me, too! Yep, yeah, don't worry, we'll be taking you on a Christmas time adventure very, very soon. So now we got this nice little pattern of jiggy feather. I mean, musical note feather. I keep doing that, I keep calling them jiggies. Musical note feather, musical note feather, musical note fucking feather, feather, feather. Very appropriate, given how many aerial tasks there are in this level. I believe there's a flight pad around here somewhere, although I could be wrong. But there is a Jinjo, though. So let's scoop him up. Three of the five collected, brought back together. And, uh, oh, look at that. There's a pipe. There's a snowman's pipe. I wonder what is in it. <gasps> Could it be? Yeah, it's a Jiggy, baby! I feel like it's been a minute since we got a Jiggy in this level, but we're up to two. And there, as I remembered, is a flight pad, so that's something we can take care of. And hey, there is the final Christmas present for Boggy's kids. Look at me, I'm being the dad they never had. Take me to the kids! The I'm the last one! So there's the top of the snowman, but... What is supposed to be up there? Well, there's supposed to be a Jiggy up there, which was unlocked by hitting this button. Oh no, it's under him! All right. So then the top of the hat, I believe that's just a bunch of ice monsters I gotta ice. Let's go. You're an abomination. You must be eliminated. Oof. What are you doing there? D E D dead. No, no, no! I could have sworn I was I was owed a jiggy on the top of this snowman. Where's my jiggy, sir? Ah, poop. Well, oh, something's afoot here, and I don't like it. But I also could just be misremembering. Who knows? It's 
equally possible it was either one of those two things. But for now, let's go get this Jiggy out of this deadbeat dad. It gumbo gum. Boom! That's the Heimlich maneuver for you folks. That's better. Hey, you found my sled. I'll go and practice for the big race now. See ya, buddy. Yeah, don't worry about your children. Worry about yourself, you selfish man. Ba -ba, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And now I'm going to slip down because of that poorly placed Jiggy. But we've got Christmas presents to give out. We've got a family to reunite. And by family reunite, I mean i got to make these kids feel better about the fact that their dad doesn't love them. And we're going to slip into the igloo here. And here are all the sad little kids. Presents for you! Presents for you! Wow, thank you, Brown Bear! Aw, cheer up, guys. Yippee, now we've all got presents! Here's something for you! Yeah, buddy! Alright, scooped up another Jiggy. Four down. Good hanging with you guys. You're good kids. I don't care what they say about your dad. And we got a Jiggy waiting for us under the snowman. Under the snowman. And, uh... Oh, I think I remember what was supposed to be on top of there. Yes, we're gonna have to eliminate these rogue snowmen. Before we go and transform into... Well, I'll save the transformation in case you don't know. I don't want to ruin it for you. I'm not... I'm not one of those people who spoil things. I believe in the sanctity of discovering something for the first time. All right. Oof. Almost whiffed it again, but never t not to worry. Got him! Ah, oh, and still stayed airborne. That's key. All right. There's a mumbo token, so I'm one step closer to that. All right. We got one more of these... Rude boys. And that's it, right? Yeah, there we go. Alright, let's get airborne. Uh oh. Waste, wasting some altitude. And I have now used every single one of my feathers, but that's okay. Oh, no, it's not okay. Well, alright, whatever. There we go. There we go. Six out of ten. Pretty good. Really? It was right there. Right at the ground. So we gotta carefully wake our way down the snowman. I think I'm gonna pick myself up some health. All right. So, let's see what there is left to do as Banjo. Uh, I gotta go have myself a little bit of a sled race. And gotta pick up some of the goodies we left behind from killing those evil snowmen. Again, you can't break your fall with that. It, logically, it just doesn't make any sense. You should be able to... Ugh. That's the noise I'm gonna make from now on when I'm disgusted in myself. What did he leave behind? Some gold feathers and a honeycomb. I'll take it. And what did this Mr. Snow, Mr. Evil Snowman, Mr. Rude Man leave behind? Got one of our extra honeycomb pieces on point. And uh, just for good measure, we got a mumbo token. And that takes us right up to 15, so we will be good to go for the transformation of this level. Hello again, buddy. I'm waiting for someone to race me. We'll race you, numbutt! Sorry, you're too big for my sled. I can only race someone smaller. Well, we'll have to show him. So, easy way to deal with that problem is to go visit our buddy Mumbo. And can I make it across? Nope. All good, though. Not like I care. Not like it means a lot to me. There's Mumbo just asleep in his winter cottage. We got some musical notes and a Jinjo up here. So let's scoop them up real quick. 
That's four or five, and I know where the last one is, so we will be good to go on this one. Hey, what's up, Mumbo? Transform me, please. And once you pay the transform price for Mumbo, of course, you can transform freely whenever you want. Banjo got all fat. Appreciate the, uh, the observant comments, Mumbo, but we've got a sister to save. we got an adventure to finish, so I'm just going to run through here. Uh, we're going to pick up these musical notes, which, I mean, we could have technically gotten as banjo, but it's a lot more comfortable and convenient to get them as the walrus. And I think this is going to take us all the way through 100. Look at that. 100. You found all 100 notes on this world. Well done. And I'm soon I'm going to scoop myself up some extra jiggies. Just keep this progress moving along. Hurry up and let me race. Yep, I don't need the exposition. Great, now all you need to do is steal your sled through the red salon gates and beat me to the end. Got it? Three, two, one, go. Ah, uh, this'll be easy peasy. Yeah, Magi doesn't try as hard in this race as he's gonna try in the rematch that he has with Banjo and Kazooie later. That's another instance of uh, we're gonna have to come back after we learn the uh, the super trainer shoes in Gobi's Valley. So I'm just gonna try to keep jumping ahead. One jump ahead of the fat bear. One step ahead of the race. I'm gonna rub some snow in his face. Oh, almost wiped out into the water there. I don't remember if that costs me the race, but it very likely will. Oh, now he's got a little bit ahead of me, so he's gonna get all too big for his britches. Oh, that's right, you stay in your place, which is second place, because if you're not first, you're last, buddy. And just like that, I won. Just like I knew I would. Phew, you're too quick for me, Mr. Walrus. Here's your medal. I reckon I need to race someone my own size. Look at that. There's only one place, because if you're not first, what are you? One point, one. Whee! Seven jiggies. And now I'm going to go collect number eight and nine. <gasps> wow, another walrus. Take this. But watch out for a smelly brown bear and his ugly bird partner. Wow, I bet you're going to feel real embarrassed when you realize who we are. So let's follow Waza into his racist cave. I'm sure he's got a lot of anti-bear propaganda hung up on the walls. Why, hello again, Mr. Walrus. Feel free to have a look around. Waza's racist cave. Uh, oh, yes, of course. So I actually need to... GTFO. I should not be in here as the walrus because I can't get the Jinjo as the walrus. And that, again, is bad sequencing, my friends. I am not taking advantage of the fastest ways to complete this level. And now I'm going to have to waddle my little ass over to Mumbo as fast as I can get there. Because if I want to maintain a good time, I'm probably in the 20 minute range for this, I would, you know, reasonably imagine. So let's get over here. After this, we have Gobi's Valley, which is where we will finally learn how to use the trainers so that we can run a lot quicker. But first, we've got things to do. Let's come on, change me back, change me back. Time's a wasted. Thank you, sir. All right, time to get out of here. No need for the waiting boots. I think it would honestly probably waste time. Ah, big leap. And another big one. And hey, let's just do another huge jump for good measure. Gotta get up to Waz's cave. We're gonna pick up the Jinjo, and then we're gonna do some strategic suicide in order to get a honeycomb, uh, extra honeycomb piece, and also get out of this level. Not only are we getting the Jinjo Jiggy, but we're getting something special. We're getting the mythical ice key. 
this, like the egg that we picked up earlier, was part of the stop and swap reveals that were, you know, hidden in this game upon its N64 release and teased as, you know, part of something special that would tie into... Oh, wow, you're not even going to let me down there, huh? Well, fine, I don't even want the... I don't even want it. Just kill me. There we go. Drowning and freezing. All right. So we're going to bail on this level. And I tell you what, everybody, I think we've been making some good progress today. Gotten through this a little bit faster than I intended. Gruntilda's Lair, let's see how fast it took us to get through that. Freeze Easy Peak, 21 minutes even. So I tell you what I'm going to be doing. I am going to pump the brakes here and give myself a break for Thursday afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us for a cast of the past plays Banjo-Kazooie. You can find us on all major podcast streaming platforms. We're on iTunes, we're on Stitcher, Spotify, Deezer, CastBox, iHeartRadio, Audioboom, our home. We love you. And like I said, overall, thank you for joining. Please be sure to come back. I think I will be streaming again over the weekend. Keep an eye on the Twitter feeds and the Twitch channel for the schedule. We are going to get through Banjo-Kazooie, and we're going to have a great time doing it. Until next time, we'll see you in the future. Well, that's it for A Cast of the Past Plays. Make sure to follow us on all podcast streaming services, as well as staying up to date with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And stay tuned for upcoming episodes of A Cast of the Past Plays on YouTube. Until next time, we'll see you in the future.